So when it comes to editing shorts or reels, I have this workflow, almost like a template that I use for every single video because it makes it easier and more efficient. And today I'm gonna show you that workflow in CapCut. So I'm gonna show you how to edit a short or a reel in CapCut from start to finish. And to make it more interesting, I'm gonna recreate one of my last shorts that I made in DaVinci Resolve. It's performing really well, see? Yeah, looking really good. And so yeah, I'm gonna recreate this one in CapCut, the free version by the way, because I wanna show you that you can get great looking and professional looking results in CapCut too. And I mean, in the end, it doesn't matter what you use to edit your videos, right? Just make videos, create. Not starting, that's the biggest mistake that people make. But uh, okay, enough of this motivational guru talk, let's edit. And as always, I'm using CapCut for desktop, but there's also a mobile and an online version. Okay, here we go. So first thing I do is drop my footage and audio on the timeline. Now, because I record my audio externally using a recorder instead of directly in camera, I have two separate files, one for video and one for audio, see? And so they're not synchronized. So that's the first thing we have to fix now. Select both video and audio, right click, sync video to sound and boom, synchronized. Then of course mute the original audio of the video file. And then with both audio and video selected, right click again and hit group to link the audio to the video. And that's it. And in case you're interested, I record my audio with the Zoom H5 recorder. I'll link it in the description. But don't worry, recording your audio directly in camera will get you great results too. I also use my Deity D4 Duo to vlog for example, and it sounds great. Or just use your phone. But yeah, I'm a camera nerd, you know? So anyway. Then the next step, I'm gonna cut out all the parts I don't need. Now, everyone has their own habits and workflow, right? But in CapCut, I like to do it like this. So first make sure to disable the main track magnet here. But this is only important if like me you have a separate audio file. If not, just leave it on. Okay, and then with both audio and video selected, I put the playhead right before a part I don't need, hit split here, or use the shortcut of course. Then move the playhead to the end of the part I don't need, and then hit delete left here. Or again, use the shortcut, and it's gone. And then of course, a million times the same thing, over and over, until everything you don't need is gone. And then once you're done, look, I enable the magnet here again, and boom, everything slides nicely to the left. And if you want, now you can also fine tune the cuts of course. Okay, and then once you have a nice cut of your video, some color grading. You don't have to of course, unless your footage needs it or you just want to, uh, but I always keep it super simple anyway for my shorts and reels. Go to adjustment and LUT. And this is where I've imported my own LUTs. Here, let's pick a nice one. This one maybe, drop it on the timeline. Yeah, looks good. Let's also tweak the settings a little bit more. Something like this. Looks nice, yeah, perfect. Now, of course, you could also use the built-in filters if you don't have any LUTs, no problem. And then it's time for the B-roll. I have some clips here that I need, some clips that show the filters that I'm talking about, of course, and also some clips shot with those filters. I just drop them on the timeline on top of the main video, trim them if needed, also mute to audio if needed, and if it needs color grading, I color grade them in the same way as I color graded the A-roll, the main video clip. And that's it. Simple, right? Now, I say simple, but of course the difficult part is coming up with an idea and then filming that idea. And it all depends on your style and the kind of content you make or want to make. And I found that for my channel, what works best is treating my shorts and reels as some kind of condensed long videos. So same kind of topics, same production value and everything. But the difference is that for my short videos, I always pick topics that are visually more interesting, if you know what I mean. For example, what doesn't work for my channel is something like three tips to stay motivated as a photographer, because it's more abstract, you know? It's not visually interesting. You know what I mean? When I make a short or a reel, I wanna show something. It has to be visually interesting. But of course, if you have a motivational channel, it could be different. Okay, anyway, next let's add some digital zooms to keep the viewer engaged. Here, for example, when I show the filter, I wanna zoom in a little bit. So I'll put the playhead to right before I show the filter to the camera, then double click on the video so that you have only the video track selected, then select these little diamonds here, one for scale and one for position, then move the playhead forward, hit the same diamonds again, and zoom in. 
reposition it and now you get that digital zoom effect. So the video will zoom in over time from this point to this point. Those are the, the keyframes that you made by hitting those little diamonds. And I always use this technique when I'm showing something interesting or when I want to emphasize something that I'm saying, something important. And then what you can also do instead of a zoom is make a hard cut and then zoom the second clip. So the clip that comes after the cut, like this, see? And then you get this, this jump that you zoom all of a sudden. And you can also use this technique to hide jump cuts, for example. Okay, and then auto captions. I always generate captions when I do a short or a reel. So just go to text here, auto captions, select source language and generate, that's it. Now, what you get are these boring looking captions, right? Well, what you could do to make it more interesting is use one of the built-in templates, but usually I find it a bit too much when I apply one of these templates to all the captions. So what I like to do is use a text effect only someone in the first 10 seconds of the video, just to grab the viewer's attention. For example, here when I say normal everyday lens filter, right? Delete those captions and then use one of the text effects here in text. And it all depends on your style and well, how crazy you want it to look basically. So that's how you can play with the captions and text effects. And then we're almost there, but Still a few more things. First, the cherry on top, as usual, I always add music because it also allows you to emphasize certain parts. I usually cut the music whenever I say something interesting or when I want to emphasize something funny or, I mean, it could be anything. It's a simple technique, but it works. And then I also have a few bonus techniques for you. Techniques that I use all the time in my long videos, but also quite often in my shorts and reels. And it might seem like it's just details, but it's not, no, au contraire, my friend. It's super important. First, J cuts and L cuts. So you can use them to smoothen out cuts. For example, if you have some B-roll with just music here, well, you could already let the audio of the next clip start when that B-roll is still rolling. And it makes the cut just a little bit smoother. And you can use it in both directions, of course. That's why it's called L cut and J cut. You see? And you can use them in all kinds of situations, even to make jump cuts smoother. So let's say you've cut out a silence somewhere or a weird sound. Well, now you have a jump cut, see? And you can make those jump cuts feel smoother by using a very short J cut, just a few frames. It's such a versatile technique, you can use it for all kinds of things. Just try it out and practice it. Okay, and then finally, I think I haven't mentioned or shown this in any other video yet. You can also apply effects to images. And again, it might seem like a detail, but it's not. It makes everything look more professional and more engaging. And you can get as creative as you want here. Because there are tons of effects that you can apply to images. And you can combine them if you want. So, you know, no limits. But I'll show you something simple. An effect that I use all the time. So, whenever I use an arrow in one of my videos, I usually apply the camera shake effect to it. And it makes the arrow you know, stand out a little bit more and it makes it visually a bit more interesting. But like I said, there are tons of effects that you can combine with images. Just get creative. Okay, and that's how I edit my shorts and reels. Always the same workflow, the same template, if you will. All my shorts look and feel the same. Feel free to use this workflow or use it to create your own workflow, whatever you want. I'm here to help you, to motivate you because like I said before, not starting, not creating is the biggest mistake that, well, everyone makes. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.